Good morning. Welcome to First Mount Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. We bless God for you that are with us this morning and that are listening in far and near. We just thank God for another opportunity, another day that the Lord has made. And as the scripture tells us that we should come and rejoice and be glad in that word. I, I don't know about you this morning, but I'm grateful to have a God that cares about me. And not only about me, but he cares about all of us this morning. So let's just give the Lord some praise wherever you are this morning, that we can worship him in spirit and in truth. Join us this morning as we talk about the lesson on this morning. You are not alone. How many know that you wouldn't have made it without the Lord? I know I'm a witness to that this morning. Join us as we go into this song selection today. Mm -hmm. Never Jesus, 
the author and finisher of our faith, who far by the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. If that's in your Bible, wherever you are, you just say amen with us this morning. Let me say this. The theme of this message has nothing to do with the late great music entertainment of that of Michael Jackson or the writing of R. Kelly, the composer, because in this writing of Hebrew 12, there is a great deal of insight to be seen with many, many different results. Whereby the song then sung in 1995 by Michael Jackson mentioned that someone had left and left them alone where they could not be found. And what different, differentiates the leaving of them as opposed to what we will discuss this morning or today is that of Christ. And Christ promises never ever to leave us alone. In fact, the same writer of this book in Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse 5, he says that the Lord declared that he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. And that has to be, to me, a bit of encouragement this morning. I say just to know and maybe even hear again ought to be uh, ought to be encouraging and confirmed encouragement just to know that in spite of what I'm going through, in spite of whatever I've been through, and maybe even in spite of what I know is lying ahead of me to face, I'm pushing up my weary wounded hands to the Lord. Have I got a witness in it? And I'm pushing them up because I know that I'll go through them not alone, but with the Lord on my side. I wish I had a witness there. I'm pushing up my weary and wounded and beaten up spirit in the midst of my troubles and giving God praise because I'm having to do it by myself. I said, I'm not having to face the heaviness of life and what we call life alone. And somebody ought to be feeling this this morning. You've gone through weeks and months and maybe even a year or so of difficulties and differences, and you found yourself wearing out friends and kins and associates. Because I want to let you know this morning that even associates tend to get tired of folk. And I want to let you know, when folk get tired of you, I'm talking about sick and tired, they're tired. And then you find yourself, my brothers and sisters, with a feeling of, well, guess I'm going to have to go through it all by myself. Why? Because I'm all alone. Tell somebody to stop saying that this morning. Because Jesus has said it, he doesn't have to say it any more than what he said, that he'll never leave us alone. The main thought of this book this morning as we bring to discussion, the main thought of this book Right, is that the believers would come to see that things can be better. Life can be better than what it is. In fact, some, some 13 times is it included in this writing that of things being better. And as we look out, as we, as we survey the situations we're facing, we're facing some terrible situations. We're facing the distrust of leadership. In the White House, we're facing a distrust of leaders, foreign and, and abroad. We're, 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 we're facing a distrust of people on a regular basis, facing a distrust of people in leadership on our jobs, in our homes, in our churches. And sadly enough, the struggles are as real as they can get. Anybody listening to me ever felt the pressure of struggles? The struggle is real. And if you're not careful within the struggle, it's it to you. The struggle can and could take you out if you're not careful with your struggles. Somebody said this once about struggles. Somebody said that desperate times calls for desperate measures. And struggles will bring you face to face with that cliche of feeling that of desperate times. 
which leads to desperate measures. Well, what are you saying, preacher? That when we fall into desperate times, you almost do anything to get out of the struggle. The problem for a whole lot of us is that we want to have all the glitter, all the gold, the glory that blindly is seen by the lost. But we don't believe that the struggles should be a part of it. And I want to let somebody know this morning that's listening in on us that Jesus endured some struggles. His life was made of a catalyst because of his suffering. And when we can come to the realness of that life, it's not all about glitz and glamour. We then can realize and appreciate the unappreciated days. The problem with some of us is that we don't, we don't know how to appreciate those hard days, those hard times, those, those times of struggles, the times when we suffer. Jesus suffered. Jesus struggled, but yet we don't want to suffer for anything. I wish I had a witness in here. Yes, there are some days, my brothers and sisters, that I wrestled. There are some days that I struggled with them and still do with this thing called life. But my reward and relief is that while I'm going through them, that there is a comfort of knowing that I'm a part of Christ. And Christ is a part of me. First John 4 and 4. Let us know that Christ is a part of us and we can be a part of him. Help me to face whatever is dropped on me. I don't know about you, but I appreciate having some good days in as much as I appreciate my bad days. I appreciate my heels that I've had to climb. Why? Because through the world I wasn't alone. And when you have been connected to the connection of Christ, Christ has something better to offer. And that includes not ever having to tread through life's up and downs, good and bad days. When you have been connected to Christ, he gives us an assurance that we don't have to go through it alone. I wish I had a witness in here this morning. Within the uncertainty of the writer, the purpose is quite clear. As to seeing the betterment of life. And every now and then, it may not be, it may be a rainy day. But in the midst of a rainy day, you ought to see the betterment of life. In the days when you can't find nobody to talk to, you can't find no comfort, there's still some betterment of life. If you're on this side of the shore and breathing, there is a betterment of life. And it's a part of it. And, 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 so, and so the method of this lesson is that they were being brought to see the betterment of life. And not only the betterment of life, but the superiority of Jesus Christ. Clearly, the writer here is aware of his audience's address. He knows fully that the address is that of Jewish Christians. And thus, therefore, his main objective would not be to uproot the old ways and thoughts, but, 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 but show them a better way. Show, show, show them that, that in the midst of it all, in the midst of keeping with, with all the things that, that had built up their confidence as Christians, that they yet still is a better way. And that, and that going to this better way, you don't have to go to it alone. I wish I had a witness in here. What, what, what are you saying, preacher? I said, thus, therefore, his main object would not be able to uproot the old ways and thoughts, but to show them that there's a better way that existed in Christ Jesus. In other words, you can't move forward and continue to try to hold on to what was. You can't get to what's better. If you're settled with what was. Have I got a witness in here? Can I say that again? In other words, my brothers and sisters, you can't move forward standing still. You, you can't move forward and continue to try and hold on to this is how we used to do it. It worked back then. How come it won't work now? You, you, you can't move forward stepping back. And, and, and the purpose of this writing was that he would show the Christian Jews that there is yet still 
a better way. In other words, you can't move forward and go backward. You, you take an old Chevy. Take an old Chevy. An old Chevy would come with many features. I'm talking about the Chevrolet now. Maybe, maybe uh, an SS Super Sport or a Chevelle Malibu. No, an old Chevy. And, and, and I can't claim to have a good mechanical background. But I can guarantee you that most of the time, if you had a pretty good 300, 350 engine in that Chevy Malibu or in that, that Chevy Super Sporter or Impella, whatever it was, if, if you had a, a 350 engine in with a four barrel carburetor, most likely you were going to be able to succeed and exceed all of the demands that you put on that car. But, 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 but the only way it was going to ever be overtaken, the only way that 350 engine, that, that Chevrolet, was going to be outranged, you're going to have to come with something better. The world, my brothers and sisters, and the world of Christianity was in need of knowing that there was something or someone better. And that was Jesus. Not only at this time of writing, but even today, the picture that we see every morning when we turn on the news, the pictures that we hear in the evening time before we lay down that comes up on the news of what transpired from the morning to the evening, the picture that we hear and see of how life is taken for granted and how lives are being taken throughout the world with mass shootings and, and mass killings. But, but, but the, the picture that we see does not show us the betterment of life. And so the Hebrew writer's main purpose was not only to, to help them, but to show them the Jewish Christians of no offense to their belief and practices. It's just that Christ has something better to offer. Somebody need to know that this morning. Somebody need to know that this morning. So, somebody need to know that Christ has so much better to offer. And so in this letter here, as the songwriter says, what he does, the songwriter says this, that, he offered, that we offer Christ to you. And so the writer of this book, this letter, this epistle, he's writing the fact that Christ has something better to offer. And he urges them of that of living a holy life. Do you remember what, what Peter said in 1 Peter 1 and 15 and 16? He says, but as he hath called you as holy, so be ye holy in manner of conversation. In other words, my brothers and sisters, Christ ought to be heard whenever we speak. I wish I had a witness in here this morning. I said, being a Christian, people ought to be able to hear Christ when you speak with them, when you speak to them. They ought to be able to hear the voice of Christ. Am I right about it here? Verse 16, he says, in that same text, he says, be ye holy, for I am holy. So in other words, what, 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 what the writer of Hebrews is, is trying to show the people is that in order to move forward, to move into a better situation, to move into a better life, one must be holy. And so the writer's objective, point number one, is that of seeing Jesus as being a better way. Point number one, Jesus is a better way. And in my spiritual interpretation, the writer's thought and interaction within the mind of the people was that just as we would come to realize that with the Lord, there is a better way. And so my Bible labels the content. Have we got a witness here of this text? As that of seeing Jesus as being the perfect example. Isn't Jesus a good example? I said, I said isn't Jesus a good example of how we should be? Have we got a witness here? And I don't know about you, but I really can't think of who could match up to or come close to the humanitarian example shown by Christ. I 
And so the Hebrew writer writes from the past and fell and, and fast down into the present. And as he began to bring the picture of perfection, which is none other than that of Christ, he draws from the past. Look at what he does here. He draws from the past and reveals the problem that comes within the past. In other words, the past is the past. Look at what he says. He says, Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about in so great a cloud of witnesses. In other words, we all saw how God was there in the past with all of those contemporaries before me. And just as God was there with them, the same God will be with you. So he draws from the past. And it's sad to say that some of the same problems and pains are still found in this day. Whereby we have people and churches that would rather leave what we call well enough be as well enough has been. Have I got a witness in here? And so the writer picks up from chapter number 11 where he lists the reasons of past pleasure. And so he says, wherefore? In other words, all that we have witnessed to God's forever presence, let us clean our own slate. Let us make certain that our journey be as clear as theirs. Am I right about it here? And so in verse number one, he says, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that will hinder our feeling of never being alone. And that gives us another point of reference. Well, what is that point, preacher? Make sure that you are free of those things uh, that are displeasing to God. Uh, in order to please God, uh, you must be godly. Verse number two, he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, I'm a lot about it here. Uh, for in honor for God to, uh, to orchestrate the path that we will travel. And in honor for the plan that God, who is the author, in other words, he draws up a plea for all of our lives. Uh, and it's up to us to fulfill that plan. Uh, and I want you to know this morning that uh, God came with a plan uh, that mirrors the plan that he has for us. Uh, that one day we too will be able to sit down uh, at the throne of God. Uh, and I'm right about it here. Uh, and in order for that to come to pass, uh, it begins by believing that you are and I uh, are never alone. Uh, and I'm right about it here. Uh, we need to know uh, that even in the midst of our trials and tribulations, uh, that we're never alone. Uh, and the writer here lets us know that the reason we're never alone uh, because Jesus is the author and the finisher of everything that we do. Uh, and not only everything that we do, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, and I'm right about it here. Look at what he says in verse number two. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, who for the joy uh, that was set before him uh, endured the cross. Uh, I'm right about it here. Uh, despising the shame uh, and the set down uh, at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, well, uh, what is that saying to us this morning? Uh, yes, uh, Jesus uh, took pleasure in the coming down uh, 40 and 2 generations uh, to die uh, for our sin. Uh, even in his dying, uh, I want you to know this morning, uh, even in his dying, uh, he promised uh, never to leave us alone. Uh, well, uh, in the midst of his dying, uh, yes, uh, prior uh, unto uh, him hanging on the cross, uh, he assured his disciples, uh, the twelve that was with him, uh, he assured them uh, that he would leave them a comforter. Uh, yes, uh, and this comforter would not just be uh, on the scene, uh, but he would lead them uh, and guide them uh, unto all truth of the world. Uh, yes, uh, that's what Jesus did. Uh, he gave us the perfect example uh, of pleasing God. Can I get a witness here? Uh, Jesus uh, 
died on an old rugged cross. Died uh, for the sins of the world. Uh, died for your sin and my sin. Uh, but every Sunday morning, uh, he got up out of the grave with all power in his hands. All power in his hands. All power in his hands. Jesus would never leave us alone. I don't know about you this morning, but you that are out there today that do not have a church home, you that's feeling like you're all alone, you that's gone through these 14 months of this pandemic, living alone, enduring all of the mental struggles, the mental anguish, anguish the mental suffering, you that's, you that's sat, sat there in the house and didn't know which way to go or who to call on, Call on Jesus because he's right there. If you call upon him, he will answer. And just know this morning that you're never alone. You might feel like you're alone. You might be going through something on your job, something in your house. You're never alone. Jesus Christ promised that he would never leave us, nor would he forsake us. And he left a perfect example to us. To us, and if we trust in him, as Solomon has told us, he will never leave us. God bless you this morning. God keep you in our prayers. Solomon said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. God bless you today. We pray that the word of God will be helping you. Just know that you're not alone. Jesus Christ waits for you to call on him, and he will be there. God bless you. God keep you as I pray. Till next time.